Test, testing. Can you hear me now? Good morning, everyone. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, it was a, uh, a beautiful introduction to what I'm actually going to speak. So God is good. He's always uh, orchestrating things. And, and this worship was amazing. And I just want to welcome you. Uh, if you're here for the first time, my name is Juan Ascension. I'm not the normal pastor, but welcome. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice to see uh, all of you here today. For those who are watching online, uh, I want to welcome you as well. And uh, I have a little announcement, or it's a big announcement to me, but the Spanish ministry is going to be suspended as of today. So pray for me. It's, I've been crying. It's been, it's been a little devastated. Uh, devastating for me, so, uh, but God has other plans, he's good, uh, that's just, what I need from you guys is to pray for me, so, and, and, uh, just to, you know, God knows why, why things happen, right, and, um, hopefully it'll pick up again, so, um, with that said, let's, uh, let's pray, Father, uh, we just thank you, Lord, for today, I just thank you, Lord, for uh, allowing us to be here together um, in one spirit, Lord. Uh, I thank you for all the people that are here today, all my brothers and my sisters. I pray that you open our hearts to hear your word. I pray that I get diminished and you get increased as I speak, Lord, so that you will speak to them. And that they will retain everything that is good from you, Father. So I just thank you, and I love you, and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's, um, I just want to read Psalms 46, verse 1 to 3. Um, we'll come back to this, but verse 40, uh, Psalms 46, verse 1 and 3 says, God is a refugee and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Amen. He goes, therefore, we will not fear, pay attention to this, if we believe what we just read, we will not fear, though the air gives away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam out of the, mountain, of the mountains shake with their surging, okay? Basically saying that God is our refuge and strange when we need help, when we're in trouble. <clears throat> Last week... I don't know why I chose that color, pinkish. So, um, can I get help here? There. Last week, Pastor David uh, spoke about strongholds, okay? And like the song that we were singing at the end, freedom is here because those strongest strongholds are gone, our, our, our way, right? That's what we're hoping for when we come to Jesus and he liberate us from where we used to be. Uh, this is Pastor David's uh, uh, points from last week. So it says, by, by faith, how, how do we get rid of the strongholds? I'm not going to go through the sermon because he did. So if you want to go from last week, it says, by faith, present every thought into Jesus, both the righteous and the righteous for his judgment. Then he goes, ask God to give you victory over the strongholds you need to overcome. <clears throat> Is there any o o strongholds in your, in your life that are overtaking you? Ask God to give you victory and he'll give you victory. Number three, start, start the stronghold from righteousness, thoughts that nourish it, support and encourage it, okay? So we need to stop feeding, right, the, the, the strongholds that are keeping us uh, captive, we need to stop that. We need to do that. Weaken the stronghold by sowing discord among the lies with professions of truth and love. Instead of be talking uh, lies or whispering or anything, talk truth. Talk love to everyone who you come across, to your loved one, even to yourself. Believe what God is telling you. Number five, march around it and trumpet the victory of Jesus' authority, provision, and instruction in your life. He gave the example of the wall, wall of Jericho. That's why he is using this vocabulary. Six, 
seek to, seek to bring every thought into submission to Jesus. So if any sinful thought comes to you, are ready to punish it. And number seven, endure to the end. So let's say that you conquer are your strongholds. Let's say that you are free, like we were proclaiming with that song as of today. Let's say that that addiction, that uh, sin that was controlling your life, you finally had control over it because you submitted to Jesus. You follow these points, but at the end, it's just the blood of Jesus Christ and believing it and living it that took you out of those strongholds, right? So now what? Is all the work done? No. A couple of years ago, I think I was in the best shape of my adult life. I don't know if you guys remember me. I was, I was showing a little six-pack. I was uh, losing weight. I was, I was doing a lot of CrossFit every day, four or five hours every day. I was looking good. <laughs> Next thing out of the sun, I stopped. I gained about 45 pounds, and they came like that in less than six months. Since those 45 pounds, I lost again the, the weights. I'm not exercising. There's more dieting and taking care of what I eat. But my point is that, you know, just like the strongholds, once they're gone, there's more work to be done. I wish all the work that I did to, to have that, that, that where I was with the muscles and the, the, the kind of a six, I'll call it a four pack or something. <laughs> I, I, I would wish it would stay there, but no. He came back and he came back with, ven- with vengeance. 45 pounds. I'm not kidding you. It reminds me of the story in the Bible of, of, of Jesus when, in Matthew 24. When uh, actually Matthew 12. When he talks about the evil spirit, remember that he left a person. Um, um, why don't we look at it? Do I have it here? No. Matthew 12, verse 45. So if you want to turn there. Matthew 12, 45. Or 43. When, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, he goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it, okay? Then he says, it will return to the house I left. And when it arrives, it finds the household occupied, swept and clean and put in order. Then he goes and takes his seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. Thus is how it will, it will be with this wicked generation. So you see what's happening here? The spirit left. He couldn't find a place. It's like, let me go back. I was happy there. He finds everything nicely. And it's even worse because he brought his friends. That's why the work is not done once you have conquered your strongholds. There's more to be done. Um, I'm going to write here on the board. If you guys could shout out, let's make it quick. Strongholds, attacks that you as a Christian receive every day. I just want to put them here for reference. So, so when we look at it, we, we could see what we, we are against it. This person here, I'm going to call him Mr. Freedom, okay? Uh, he's free. But outside of him, I'm sure every day in your everyday lives, because now you're a Christian, you've been attacked. Isn't it that? What are some of the things that, that we encounter every day in today's society? Greed? Uh-huh, go ahead. Lust. What else? Envy. Uh, laziness. 
fear, someone say fear. Guilt, condemnation. That's how you spell con that for two M's. C O and I got it. Uh, anything, any uh, physical attacks, uh, health, amen. Uh, addict, I think I have addictions. Addictions. Like this. <laughs> hey, I'm closing out. Angry? Ang anger? I'm not. We yeah, are depression. And the list goes on and on, right? So, so you're free. You probably are fighting with these strongholds in your life. And finally, you're like, I was able to, to, God liberated me, right? You, you, you stop believing the lies, you stop believing the devil, and, and, and they're gone for your life. Are they really gone? We're surrounded by them. Either afflicted by other people, even family members, loved ones, Christian brothers and sisters. We see it all the time. Amen. It says in um, Genesis 4, 7, this is when uh, God was telling Cain, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. See, sin is crouching at the door. Its des desire is contrary to you, but it must, you must rule over it. So sin is right there at the door. It's trying to break the door and come back in and tries to overtake you again and take you away from the freedom, the happiness that you have through Jesus Christ. For Peter says in 1 Peter 5 8 that the, uh, be sober minded, be watchful, because your adversary, the devil, is what? He's seeking, it's like a lion, right, lion trying to destroy you. He's trying to devour, devour you, right? So that's what's happening. So, so we're indeed free, but sin is everywhere. It's like putting pressure. It's like when you go underwater. Uh, if you're in a submarine um, or in a scuba dive, anybody scuba dive? When you go down, the whole pressure is, is like if you go too deep, it's just going to destroy you. Even submarines, right, if they go too deep. And, and uh, you just need to be careful with that. It's the, the same with that. Sin is just pressing us. We are aware of sin. I want you guys to be, we need to have our eyes open. We need to realize what sin is. Because if we don't know what sin is, how are we going to fight it? We need to identify it. And most of these things, at the end of the day, bring you to depression. That's the worst type of sin. A lot of times when you're depressed, what are some of the symptoms that happen? What are you? Your continence, if you see someone or even if you realize that you're going through this, it's important that you recognize it. You're, you're, you have a fallen continence, right? You have a broken spirit. You're sad all the time. You're experiencing despair. You're being broken hearted. You're being burdened by the way of the sin. You're mourning. You're really bowed down, right? Not like we were bowing down for gratefulness, but it's, you're just like down because sin has this, all this pressure on you. You're having grief and you're losing heart. So if you want to take a picture of this and you could read it, we need to recognize when that's happening. We need to recognize when, when, when all these things are attacking us. And like Peter said, like the, the, the devil is like the lion trying to destroy us. 
But it says then, he goes into in 1 Peter 5, 9. We need to resist them, be firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Guess what? If you think, oh, I have problems with addictions, with greed, with attitude, you're also not the only one. So don't feel shame. It, Peter says, your brothers throughout the world are experiencing the same thing. But the devil wants you to know it's like, you, Juan, you are the worst one. How can you do it when you see all your other brothers that are so holy and are like walking righteously? And, and then you start putting these lies. That's why Pastor David on his point says, speak the truth. Stop believing the lies. Because that's what the devil wants you. We are all humans. We're falling short of the glory of God. So we all sin. We need to recognize when, when, when you're experiencing some of these uh, signs, it's time for, for us to be active, proactive, and react, reach out. Of course, our number one uh, person that we need to reach out is to God. But that's why he also put brothers and sisters in our lives. Not to condemn, not to put them down. Let's be careful, guys. Part of being a Christian, as I'm learning, as I'm getting older, is not checking all these boxes that I follow this, I do that, I do this and that. But the main thing, of course, is goes into the back to, to, to commandments. Loving God with all your heart, loving your neighbor as yourself. That means to make reconciliation. If there's no reconciliation with the, with the brothers, with the sisters, when they wrong you or when you did wrong to them, we're just playing a game here at the church. We need to be united. We need to be together. We're not to run away from the problem. We're not to make the problem bigger. We're not to be gossiping. But we need to reconcile. That's what God has, has us to do. To be, we're, that's we're brothers and sisters. We're one family. We don't want to be separated or destroyed. So we need to recognize that. And if someone reaches to you for prayer and they just want to pour out to you, listen to them, pray with them. Sometimes you don't have to give advice if you don't know because, you know, they just want to listen. But pray with them and be accountable to them. You guys have an accountability partner at church? We need to have those in our lives. All these things I'm telling you lead to depression, and depression sometimes ends in suicide. It's really, it's a really hard thing, brothers and sisters. First Corinthians 10:12 says, "Whoever thinks that he's standing securely should watch out so he doesn't fall." Listen to that. We have in the Bible. People who were standing securely on their lives. Elisha, he, uh, he had just killed 450 of their priests because they brought, I don't know if you remember the story, they brought the, uh, the burn offerings. It's like, pray to your gods. If he lights the thing on fire, then it is your God, but then I'll do my God. And he went through water, right? I'm, I'm just like, are you guys done with what you were doing? And the, 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 their gods wouldn't turn on the fire. And he just prayed to, prayed to God. And he, he like burned the whole thing and it's like, kill all those false prophets. But what happened on the next chapter? He got scared by his own life cause, and he, because he uh, reacted because uh, they, they were telling on him of what he did. And he just ran away. One day he's standing strong. He's like, like, you know, God is on my side. The other way he's running away. David also committed sin and failed to repent and then lost hope. See, David, a man after God's heart. Like he, he, he knew Saul was trying to kill him and he saw how God delivered and everything. So he was standing strong and then one day he fell and lost hope and ran away. John had the same thing, right? He was the place of the workings of God. He became angry with God, and he wanted, even wanted to die. Peter, 
Come on. That, that's a hard one. Jesus, I will not deny you. I'll be here with you. I will always be with you. Like, I'm not going to run away. The rooster sang two times. And what did Peter do? Deny him. Judas betrayed Jesus and felt remorse. After throwing the 30 pieces of silver into the sanctuary, he committed suicide by hanging himself. So we need to recognize, don't think, and also don't think that you're strong, that you are like, say, believe it. <laughs> I mean, but with God, but just don't stop not doing nothing. Being a Christian is a constant work. We need to run the race until the end. Jesus has done the work of saving us, of giving us life. We're saved by, work, by, by faith, not by works, so no one should boast, right? But then he says that we have been uh, selected for the works that he has for us. So we need to start doing those things and keep on doing. Uh, when I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story of my life. So <laughs> I don't know if you heard before, but... Uh, <clears throat> When I was, um, so I grew up uh, with my, just my mom. My dad will come and go. I was in the city, biggest, second city, biggest city in Mexico. I was on the streets, right, uh, all my life. Um, and, you know, I started to learn to, to be a hustler. From little, I, I will go sell candy. Have you seen those kids when you go to Mexico that they're asking for for cheekless, that was me. So I know that they might, they could be annoying, but I see myself there because that's where I came from. I'm not, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It, it, it was tough, um, but that's all I knew. But you know, I wanted to help my mom, and then I see that you know we don't have much, but I could get stuff and I start creating my own businesses and starting selling toys and. I'm them some jewelry for women, and like I, I was only like, gosh, when this happened, I was about 12, 13. I had my own, um, there was a SWAT meet in Mexico. Every day of the week, there's SWAT meets in different parts. So I would just go and travel and go to them. I would go to school in the nights on the afternoon because they have two, um, two schedules, one in the morning, one in the night after. So I would go to the second one. And, you know, little by little, I'm, like, right here struggling uh, with everything. I've seen a lot of these things in my life. It was normal. I didn't recognize it. I was part of who I was. And, um, and as I'm doing those things, uh, finally going to junior high, I was, like, a big adult kid. Like, it was amazing. Like, now I see junior highs, uh, kids, and to me, they're, like, so little with no knowledge of life or things <laughs> but I like I, I, I you know it's just different I I guess when you're just growing the streets is different but but I wanted to do something with my life and 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 I even got into um back in those days in Mexico they brought some like a computer course and I was interested in computers because I never had a computer and, and um, this is years ago, so you could imagine the computers actually, let me tell you what I program on. They will give you uh, uh, cards, like a paper card, and you will, you will make holes into the card. That was your program. That was your data. So it, if you were to type the, uh, the record of a person, you will make holes on the card, and then you will have your stack of cards. So you will put some in order to run a program, and then it's like for this person, and it will just read. It was the coolest thing. Uh, so I, if you want to call that a computer, but I studied to be that. that they, give, they even gave me permission to study because that was for 18 and over. I was, at that time, I was 13. And it was a two-year, I was, they called me the kid, El Nino, at the, at the school. And, and it was amazing. So, and then I had a girlfriend. It was, she was like the cutest girl at school. I, I, everyone liked me, like uh, my friends. I was living the life. I was like, life was beautiful finally um, from 13 to 15. Then my mom goes, son, let's go to um, Los Angeles to visit your brothers and sisters. Everyone was living here. They came through a visa program. Back in those days, they used to give you visas to come and help and work, and finally you obtain your visa. 
And it's like, we're going to go to Disneyland. So we come, and I'm so happy because we're going to go to Disneyland. And we go to Disneyland, and we're spending time here. And finally, the summer is almost over. And she's like, we're not going back to Mexico. And believe it or not, I had gotten a, an internship already for, to work for the uh, Social Security, the, uh, the, not Social Security Administration, the, 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 the hospital, um, the free hospital. I forgot what his name, uh, the IMSS. Is a, but I forgot what, 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 what they call it. Anyways, to just work on creating records, right, computing computer, because that's what I study. So I was going to make a lot of money. I had a friend that was famous. They called me Drogas, the drug dealer or something. Don't ask me why, but I, I was famous. And, and then um, my mom is like, you're not going back, Juan. And then I go, why? It's just staying here. Ah. As I got into depression. All those signs that, that you saw, I didn't know the language. I went to a school in South Central LA back when it was really bad. With The school was about 90% uh, uh, African Americans. Then the other 10% were Hispanics, but they were not even Mexicans. I, I didn't understand all this. They were from Central America, and they hated Mexicans. So I was in a minority school, and I was the minority of the minority of the minority, like, like something like that. I saw stabbings almost every week. People, a guy who got shot in homeroom in front of me. The language wasn't there. I didn't have any friends. I turned into depression. All these things that you see, anger, guilt, pride, loss, like... Thinking about my dad, my mom, everything in my life, like I never get a break. And, and it's horrible, let me tell you. Uh, finally, I grad- graduated, entered to college. Life got a little better according to my thinking. I started to go to school, but I was, that, th- th- those, those other things started getting worse, right? People will not see my depression because they will see a happy one. But when I will go home, I will be sad. I will be empty. I used to cover my head in the night because I was scared. I, I, I'm not kidding you. I couldn't go to sleep. I had to tuck my, my, my blankets, my pillow, like, like in the night. Like I was scared. I was living on my own. I had my own apartment until I finally, of course, you guys know the story. Lucy met me and she married me with a lot, a lot of baggage. <laughs> Uh, but I knew, I found Jesus. He gave me the freedom that I needed. He gave me, he took all these things that were inside of me, they ran away. They're like, Juan, you're free. I died for your sin, for everything that you did. You're a new creation. The old Juan is no, no more. You are my son. You are my beloved, and I have a future for you. I have a future place for you to be with me for eternity. And guess what? I believed it. And that same plan he has for all of you guys. If you guys struggling through any of these things, if you guys going through any strongholds in your life, Jesus is the answer, is the solution. I mean, I cannot express it no more how much Pastor David spoke about it last time. We, we need them in our lives because we, I alone couldn't make it. I, I went looking for so many gods, for so many things that, that I would have used in meditation. You call it. Even the Satanism, whatever. I did all those things. It wasn't until I find Jesus Christ. But guess what? Now I'm here. And I'm in a circle, and these things are trying, like, like everything's coming, everything. Like, and you know, the point of today's study is that God is a stronghold. We were talking about destroying strongholds last time, but now we need a stronghold. We need to be establishing God. He's our stronghold, and that's what I'm telling you. This is a work in progress in our life for us to walk every day, to us to keep on going. And we're going to see God is our stronghold. Turn to Psalms 46. 
Psalms 46. Psalms 46, verse 1 and 3 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present. We already read this one in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear through the air be removed until the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Okay? The word might seem chaotic, brothers and sisters, unpredictable. We all seek the place of a safety, place and security. And the Bible Assuredly and repeatedly reassures that God is our stronghold. He's our strength. He's a refugee. Look at Psalms 18.2. This is where we're going to spend most of the time right now. Psalms 18.2. It says, do I have it here? Yeah. The Lord, Jehovah. It's my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in who I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Read that again. Do you guys believe that? But do you guys believe it for reals? Because even if one of these has broken into the circle... Whatever it is, has broken and is raining. Remember, we are to confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us. And he, we haven't been tempted. And he has more than he has given us a, an answer to get out of those temptations, problems. So don't, don't believe the lies. Don't open the door. Because once you open the door, maybe if this rebounded here. And, and maybe I open the door to envy. Then the other ones are going to come. This is cool, actually. I'm glad I wrote it. Maybe the other ones are going to come this way, right? Because you already opened the door to here. So now it's like they're going to come here. And I only, put, I only picked uh, envy. You could open the door to pride and they could go through there. To anything, sexual immolarity. immolarity. <laughs> To any sexual things that are going in your life, so condemnation to loss, whatever it is, you open the door and you start believing lies, all these things are going to consume you and they're going to go back and you're going to be in a worse place. People have walked away from the faith. Was, was it God who, who failed us? Maybe we were not exercising our faith. We were not keeping up with our salvation. So it's very, it's very, it's, this, is, this, this is a lot, brothers, that, brothers and sisters, that we need to, 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 to really pay attention to it. Because this could destroy us in a second. Okay? We, we, we definitely need to do that. Um. Now it says, Jehovah is a rock. Isn't that rock represents like stability, like permanence? They're unremovable, right? They're like the base, the foundation. Jesus is a cornerstone, right? When David refers to the Lord as his rock, he acknowledged God in an, in an unchanging nature, the foundation of his faith. When we face trials and tribulations, we can stand firm in the promises of God. He's our rock, our fortress. He surrounds us with. Now he says that Jehovah is my fortress. I have this out of order. A fortress is what? A place of? Safety of defense, right? He says that Jehovah is that. On the, on back in the old days, or like David put a picture of the city with the fortress of, of the walls. That's, that's what a fortress is. a safe place where you are. Well, God <coughs> is your, your place of safety. 
We could run to him, our fortress. He surrounds us with his protection and shields us from the attacks of the enemy. He's our deliverer. Who says amen to that? A deliverer means that he's the one who rescued you. Who is the one who rescued me? All the other guys that, that I was looking for, all the other ones that I tried. It's like, 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 like Elijah. They, ha- they all have the, the other prophets have their own gods and everything. They didn't do nothing for them. All these gods that I was looking for, they didn't do nothing for my life. Only Jesus did. I could tell you that for sure. He's my deliverer. He hears us when we cry out to him and he, hears, and he acts on our behalf. He trusts in his powers to deliver you no matter how dire the, the circumstances are. He's always going to be there. God, he says that he is my strength in whom I take refuge. Did I need to say more than that? But again, you need to believe it and you need to act it. My God is, uh, I'm on shield. And and some Bibles it says buckler, right? But it's a shield. It's the shield right here. This shield, get out of here, you sin. I'm going to, this is God. If you're in him and his rock and his strength, he's going to have a shield against you. Okay? He's the horn of my salvation. And the victory only comes from God alone and nothing else. He is the one who lifts us up and gives us the power to overcome to celebrate his victories in our lives, to give him all the glory. And finally, he's our stronghold. In some Bibles, it says he's our high tower. He's our high tower. A high tower offers a vantage point, a place of safety where we could could see the enemy approaching from a distance. So I'm going to write here a a mountain, a high tower. I just love my, my drawings. I'm telling you, I grew up on the street. I, I see my daughter nowadays. She has everything, right? She has, I don't know, a thousand pencils with like a different shades of color. She has paper and she draws beautifully. They go YouTube. Back in my day, on my days, me on the street, this is all I drew. I, I, and a house. This was my house. Like I knew how to draw a house and a person or something like that. <laughs> She draws so beautifully. And, uh, but he is our strong tower. He is the high tower. He gave us a perspective and clarity in the midst of chaos. From his vantage point, we gain insight and wisdom to navigate through life's challenges. Seek refuge in his wisdom and guidance. I'm telling you guys, we need to recognize the sin. We need to recognize the, the signs when a person is going through struggles. Because when someone's sad, when I see my son sad, some what happened. Usually it's because he lost a game of Fortnite or something. I was like, I knew something was happening. I wish those, those were my problems in life. But, but you could tell when people are sad, they're losing countenance. They're like, recognize those signs. Pray for them. If you're led by the Spirit, say, brother, I don't know what's going on in your life. Can I pray for you? And just give them a word of wisdom, a word of truth, something that will, like, help them in their walk with the Lord. You don't have to, you know, sometimes they just want a a shoulder to cry on. Sometimes they just want to share something. Oh. Oh. Finally, uh, these are 10 points that I have to help us biblically to, um, to recognize the God and to know that God is our stronghold. He's our foundation. He's our base. Remember that God has promised to care for you in any situation, no, how, how, no matter how unsettling it might seem. And there's some verses. If you guys want to take a picture, if you guys want to. Writing down, I'll wait for a minute because I know somewhat some people were not ready. But just just go through these things. 
this is a good exercise to re be reminded. Confess all sinful thoughts to God and ask for his help in changing this sinful pattern. Know that all sins you have sincerely confessed to the Lord are totally forgiven in his sight. Okay? Sometimes, and I've seen it too many times, the sin that I, and this is what people do, how can God forgive my sin? Or like you confess it to him, and you still remind it of it. Like you bring it back every time. Like you're not letting go of the sin. Then you're not recognizing the power of the blood of Jesus by you not doing that. Once you confess your sin, he says, I forgive you. Jesus said, I forgive you, Juan. I know what you went through, and it wasn't good. You might pay consequences, whatever the sin was, but I have forgiven you. And you just need to learn to move forward, but people tend to go back to the sin and bring it, and they start opening holes again, I'm telling you. We need to confess it and recognize it. Rejoice. When trials and tribulations come, rejoice. And give thanks in it for every situation, good or bad. If you didn't get uh, that promotion, if you didn't get that job, if you didn't get the girl you wanted, if you didn't get whatever, just give thanks to the Lord. He has better plans for you. Just be Rejoice, be grateful of everything. Because what? Because he has given you more. What, what Cameron was saying, I was on my knees on the last song. Because I have so much to be grateful to God. He has given me so much that there's so much that I want to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for everything. I rejoice. And I, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Pressure is going from everywhere, but I still rejoice. And if by any chance, physically, I aspire, I pass, I know that I have a future with God. I know that's the promise that I'm looking for. It will be sad, right, because I won't be here with my family for now, but there's, there's a better reward for all of us. There's something that is waiting for us, for every single one of you guys. We just need to be constant. Put on your, your sweatband and continue fighting the race. Give thanks in every situation, knowing that the endurance in trials helps conform you to the image of Jesus Christ. Wasn't Jesus? We just, in the Spanish ministry, we end up with the book of Mark. And we read it last week, right? When he had no sin. He was turning to Pilate. To be persecuted, to be a trial, in a trial. People were spitting at him, mocking him. They, they, they put a robe and a crown to make him seem like, oh, you're the king? Like, imagine making fun of him. But... He knew that God had a purpose, that there was a victory after the trial. And he just had to say, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And God at the end gave the victory to, to Jesus, our firstborn from the dead, our first fruits. And guess what? He has the same thing for all of you guys. If you guys think that people don't like you or that you're going to trials, you're not the first one. More people are, and even Jesus went through it. But guess what? He has a plan, a promise for all of you. Just believe that. Never let that go out from your head. Remember that God's forgiveness of you is the basis for you to forgive others. That's what I was telling you. It's all about me. No. You also need to forgive others. Reconcile. I'm telling you, that's the number one problem that I see at church is not reconciling with people. Not reconciling with family. Even they don't believe what the same thing you believe or whatever. We need to reconcile. 
reconciliation. Remember that the love that you have for others demonstrates the love that you have for God. How are you going to show the love of God? You show it by the love you have for others. Not for those, only for those who do you good, but for everybody else. That's how you show the love of God. Focus your thoughts on glorifying and pleasing God and on being a blessing to others in all situations. Believe me. Now we're starting to go in the, it's like, Juan, I thought you said you were going to show me how my strongholds, and now you're talking about others. Many of you, your strongholds or your battles or knowing that God is how you react to others. Believe me, we're humans. That's a big thing. And focus all your thoughts on glorifying and blessing God and being a blessing to others in all situations. Find ways, specific ways in which you can minister to others as a servant of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served but to serve. We are to be doing this. We, we need the very situation in which you find yourself. Do not dwell on things that lead to sin. Instead, discipline your mind to think on things that please the Lord. The key word is discipline your mind. Discipline. It's hard. It takes discipline to be on a diet. It takes discipline to get up every day in the morning. It takes discipline to exercise. It takes discipline to, to do this, to, to, to put your mind on the things that please the Lord. But that's the key. Discipline. Remember to pray for those who persecute you. We forget about that one. Review psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs that you have memorized. If you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling lonely, review all these things in your head. And finally, think of ways that you can encourage other believers to stimulate them to love and, to love and good deeds, okay? All these things are going to help us in building our stronghold. A stronghold that is going to help us. To deal with these attacks, these, these sins that are trying to penetrate our lives and destroy it. If we focus on all these things, God is going to help you and guide you and be with you. Let's hold fast to the truth that God is our stronghold. He's our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. We got us a stronghold. We can face any circumstance with confidence and peace knowing that he is with us, protecting us and guiding us in every step of the way. Let us continually seek his presence, trust in his unshakable nature, and rest in the safety of his stronghold. May this assurance fill your hearts of peace and courage and guide you through your life as you continue in this earth until he comes, until we go to meet him. Meet him. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope this was a blessing to you, and thank you so much. Amen. Amen.